Hunter Biden will plead guilty tomorrow and likely avoid jail time in his federal tax and gun case. But Republicans are refusing to let up their investigation of Biden family corruption. And now House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says we could be on the verge of impeachment. When President Biden was running for office, he told the American public that he's never talked about business. He said his family has never received a dollar from China, which we now prove is not true. Mr. This Speaker. is rising to the level of impeachment inquiry, which provides Congress the strongest power to get the rest of the knowledge and information needed. Outkick host Tommy Laren joins us now. Tommy, great to have you as always. And as we await Devin Archer's expected mm. testimony that Joe was on dozens of calls with Hunter's business associates, does it feel like we've reached the point where more and more people are seriously talking about impeachment, even more so than just a month ago? Well, listen, for months now, we've been literally tripping over evidence. I mean, you actually have to trip over and avoid the evidence that's been piling up, not implicating Hunter Biden, but implicating Joe Biden himself. A lot of people in the media get this incorrect. They think that we're just simply going after Hunter because he's got addiction issues and because his life is in shambles. Not so. We want to know if the big guy was involved, and we want to know if that comes at a risk and a cost of our national security and our national interest. Interest. But I would say if an impeachment inquiry is coming up on the horizon, I think I speak for a lot of Americans when I say, well, it's about dang time. We have something seriously done here so that the American people can get to the real truth, have some real transparency, and then decide for themselves, should he actually continue to run in 2024? This is going to be big. This testimony is going to be big. And notice how the White House and the White House press secretary continue to squirm when these questions start piling up, even from members of the media that you wouldn't expect. I love to see it. Yeah, there's been a shift in messaging. What do you think about that? It used to be Joe Biden mm -hmm. never spoke to his son about his overseas business dealings. Now, you heard White House Press Secretary Terry Crean Jean-Pierre yesterday say that he's not in business with his son. Yeah, the language here is very important and it's very strategic. So I hope that the real journalists out there, I hope that they're listening, picking up on this. You're going to hear more of this, but you can't get out of what we've already have on tape of the president saying that he has no knowledge of his son's business dealings. That's going to be a very damning piece of this puzzle. I think he probably really wishes he wouldn't have phrased it like that because now it's looking more and more apparent that he was in some way, shape or form, to what extent we don't know yet, involved in those business dealings. It's going to be real interesting to parse Ian Sams' language. He's the White House spokesperson who puts out all the written statements. Each word is going to be dissected because I think they have a As problem on their hands. Uh, meantime, President Biden's recent falls are reportedly worrying some Democrats about his 2024 campaign. One anonymous congressional Democrat telling NBC News, quote, the Democratic Party needs to be responsive to what people are saying about Biden and their concerns that they have with his age. The number of text messages that I got after the president and fell. I mean, my phone was blowing up. People are like, oh, this is so bad. Combine that, Tommy, with the falling with the bribery allegations begs the question, will Democrats now kick Joe Biden off the ticket? And if not, what else would it take? Yeah, I think the Democrats would much rather talk about Joe Biden's age than talk about his scandals, right? So I think that you're going to see a big shift to them now being more open to discussing his mental acuity and his physical ability, because that is much easier for them to discuss, somebody who is in their 80s. Obviously, someone in their 80s is going to be uh, somewhat uh, declining. So they would rather discuss that than the scandals here, because then they would have to admit their lazy journalism for many years covering up for the Biden family scandals. But I think one person, and you guys know this, sitting in California right now, got Governor Gavin Newsom, he's probably getting a lot of text messages every time we see the president stumble, both physically or with his words. And I think he's gearing up, ready to go. He's watching and he's waiting. And it's almost Shark Week, guys. And Gavin Newsom is like a hungry shark. He is ready to go, in my opinion. <laughs> Tommy, real quick before we let you go, from Joe Biden to his top Democrat challenger, RFK Jr., he recently said that he's been slammed by the media even more than uh, Donald Trump. And if he read the things and believed the things in newspapers that are said about him, he wouldn't even vote for himself. But he says it's all wrong. What do you think about that? Quickly here. 
Well, he has been attacked by the mainstream media, but I don't think that there is a politician alive that's been attacked more by the media than one Donald J. Trump. So let's be serious here. He's been attacked, but uh, in that game, Donald Trump still reigns supreme. He takes <laughs> far more incoming. Yeah. And he probably does win that one. It's not one that you want to win. You don't want to win it, but he's but won. But he won. Uh, Tom, you got to leave it there. Thank you so much. Fox and Bread starts right now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.